Welcome to the Nebraska Land Bank Podcast. I'm Danielle. And I'm Ty. We're here to prove that finance and fun can go hand in hand. Join us as we spotlight community growth, finance, sports, community events, and maybe even a great food find. We're always community-minded. Every voice. Every topic. Every time. So turn the volume up, settle in, and and let's let's talk talk Nebraska Nebraska Land. Land. Welcome back to the Nebraska Land Bank Podcast. Season two is here, and we're thrilled to present some incredible episodes highlighting exciting developments and businesses in North Platte. We've been taking a break for a little bit, but we're back with season two, and it feels good to be back in the podcast studio. How do you feel, Ty? Good. I don't see you around as often, so it's (laughs) nice to be back uh, from our podcasting vacation. So, uh, no, what's new? Well, we do have some changes for the season two podcast. Sadly, we won't be bringing you trivia anymore, so our guest doesn't have to research random (laughs) facts in preparation for our episodes. But to replace that, we're bringing... Uh, two new features, an icebreaker around the room question. So once we introduce our guests today, we'll each answer just kind of a fun question. And then we're also going to introduce an asking for a friend segment. So this is basically when we hear common questions from customers, um, when my sister asks me (laughs) financial advice or um, friends or even we can kind of monitor trends on social media and TikTok, things that seem to be hot topics. I'm going to ask Ty these questions because he's the expert, not me. But Ty will offer his uh, his expertise in that area on a variety of different topics that we hear about. Yeah, and we try to pick something that chimes in with our guests well, too, and then they can help me uh and provide some feedback on those subjects. So that will be fun. It was probably time to move off the trivia because I think the word was starting to get out and all of a sudden we were going to have trouble getting guests into the studio because I think they were scared of your trivia. So (laughs) this is probably a good evolution in season two. So anyway, this is, it's fun to be back and it's great to, to start season two. I can't tell you how many people have contacted me and asked when we're coming back and we're, we're deeply flattered by those contacts. Absolutely. Yeah. That means a lot. So today we have a special guest with us, Josh Catlett. He and his family are the proud owners of the local Runza franchises in North Platte. Josh will be sharing his passion for managing Runza and discussing the fascinating challenges that arise with restaurant relocation. So let's dive in with our icebreaker question. Uh, Ty, what is your favorite Runza sandwich, either from the past or present? Okay, I'm giving you a two-part answer, and I know you only asked one question, but in terms of directly answering your question, the Swiss mushroom runza is my go-to. I, I think it's fantastic. But I will tell you my number one favorite item on the menu is the Southwest chicken salad, which isn't really That's a sandwich. A good one. But see, the whole key to the Southwest chicken salad is getting the right ratio of the dressing with the salsa and shaking it up in the fancy little container that it comes in. That is the key. If you do that right, the Southwest chicken salad is the bomb. I'm I've never done that. I always oh. do two salsas, no dressing, but I've never shaken well, it. Well, that's why you're healthier than me. It, I don't know about it's that. It's better shaken than stirred. Ooh. Yeah. Shaking's the key, isn't it? It is. It See? is the key. I totally know what I'm doing for lunch today. <laughs> oh, Thanks, it is. Guys. It is so good. But but the Swiss mushroom like, runs is right there too. Yeah, that Southwest is is a great for dieters out there. It's if you look at the nutrition facts, it's very friendly, very diet friendly. We like friendly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my favorite runs. Okay, I have a two answer to that too, but I'm sticking to the runs. Although I do love the Southwest salad, the Italian from like way back, so good. I didn't get it the last time that it was here, which wasn't that long ago, uh, I feel December, like. December, beginning yeah. of December last year. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't get it. I must it's have been so on one away. of my my diet kicks at that time and didn't get it. But otherwise, like cheese runza with mustard. Like the mustard is a must-have. Okay. So like I'm not a huge mustard fan, but there are certain things that I'm like, it's like it just goes with it. And like I like mustard on hot dog, Polish dogs. You have to have it egg sandwiches like when i cook an egg at home toast like mustard with that is like a must i don't know i've ever had oh my gosh a try mustard it. on a runza try it it's really it's I, I, so good i can't have it without it really well, i can but but I it's not as to. good it's not as good i'll have to try that like well i remember once sending jared to get me a runza and he came back with no mustard and i like i must have been in a place where there was no mustard didn't have mustard in the house i was so upset <laughs> tell him to go back <laughs> get the mustard <laughs> now the real question is josh can we ask you your favorite you can um uh, so 
I've been around the block for a while. I remember many things coming and going. My favorite runs of sandwich that we've had, we had, this is probably 30 years ago. We had a Mexican runza. It was a different type of filling. And then we added like sour cream, lettuce, cheese, tomatoes, either taco sauce or um, a salsa with it. I can't remember which one, but it was just like amazing. Of course, I'm a, if I see a food truck with tacos, I'm, I'm stopping. I, I, that's what my bumper sticker says. I break for taco trucks, but um, <laughs> that's probably like my all time favorite. And that's been a very long time ago, but it's, it still sticks with me. But my, my go-to has definitely been like, I'll just, I'll do runza. When I get ready to leave, I'll grab a runza. Go to a football game, I grab a runza. Just the original. Sometimes with ketchup. I might be trying it with mustard here in the near future. But um I would love for you to report back. Okay. What you think. <laughs> Come back. You'll have to put that out in social media. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Josh says mustard's a two thumbs up. So yeah. well yeah, well I'll definitely have to give that a go. But yeah. as far as like old school sandwiches, the, the Italian's always a popular one. We get a lot of people asking for that. Actually my neighbor with the Philly runza that we have going on right now. He's like, can I buy some and like freeze them? Yeah, you can. Yeah, absolutely. You bet you can. Because he just, I mean, it's a good one too if you haven't tried it, but it's a sandwich. It's it's full. How did those recipes get developed? Trial and error. I I mean, um, what we like to do now currently is like try to keep it with the original recipe and then just add stuff to it so that, because like with the Italian Runza, it's a different filling and so it's a different recipe. So it's, we like to keep it fresh. And so you can go, you know, during your busy time, sell a bunch, but then all of a sudden you're stuck with like 10, 20, whatever left over. Well, you don't want those sitting around till five o'clock. So the key is just trying to keep a runza that we can add stuff to the people enjoy with that same, so we can keep it fresh. We can keep everything, you know, fresh, hot and delicious. Like we like to. Okay, so there's a robust history section on the Runzo website. I went and checked that out, and actually, it was it was great. It was really interesting, and um, as I was looking through it, was reminded of the dinosaur nuggets. Reminded, so that means you remember them. I remember them. That I was loved them. A long it was time ago. Devastating when they went away. <laughs> I'm still sore about that. <laughs> I realized after I was reminded about them. Um, but tell us more about Runza's local history in North Platte and how you and your family became involved. Okay, so my family came involved with Runza early 80s when my dad, actually, we used to live in uh, Georgia, and but my parents are from the Lincoln area. And so after Vietnam, dad was kind of, that's where he got relocated. And then it was just hard. As my dad puts it, we moved from Georgia back to Nebraska with not two nickels to rub together. And so when we came back, dad actually just went looking for, um, he did a lot of food after the war. And so he was just looking for a place that had more than one location so that there might be opportunity for growth. And he actually one day got um, an interview with Don Sr., the founder of Runza, who took his mom's recipe, made it more than just a, a little snack shack in Pioneer Park and made it into a franchise that is now close to 90 locations spread out the Midwest. And that kind of was a start for our family in the early 80s. Um, Help open a couple different stores. February of 88, we moved out to, no- to North Platte um, to open the B&J Jeffers location, and that was 35 and a half years ago. And so that was kind of the start of my family getting involved. It all started with, you know, with my dad, my um, oldest sister, has been involved. My other, my sister right above me, there's four of us kids, then myself and my, my brother. My brother's still managing a store, our, our location in Holdridge. And so it's just been like a family thing, grew up in it. We, I mean, I started making drinks and wiping tables when I was 12 years old, just kind of whatever I could do just because it was the family business. And so Runs has been really good to the Catlets and it's been awesome to see Runs a really grow from early 80s to the 90s and now getting close to 90 locations it's pretty cool to be a part of now i know we're going to get into the new location here in a second but one thing i wanted to talk about maybe before we go in there that ties to the development of runza here in our area is you know my youngest sister worked with you guys in the 90s christina worked with you guys in the 90s and still would point to she works in a business today that customer service and everything is very important and uh, she lives out in Idaho. And you guys 
teach a lot of young people skills and you also provide people a lot of opportunities for ongoing careers, right? Would you yeah. talk about that for a minute? Because I don't know that everybody when they drive through runs it periodically thinks about all those things. Yeah, that's that's very true. When we sit down with people, obviously a lot of the people we sit down with are high school students, first job, maybe second job individuals. And so we are teaching them how to make eye contact, how to smile, how to you know, answer a question. Uh, the big thing with Runza being not a national brand, a lot of people don't know what the Runza sandwich is. So you, you have to be able to tell them as they walk in the door, especially with the location right off the interstate, every day we get a handful of people like, what is a Runza sandwich? And so you have to be able to tell them and communicate that where hopefully they then try it. And so we do, I mean, we've taught people how to count change, um, you know, even good hygiene at times. And so there are a lot of those life skills early on that in high school, getting your first job, the responsibility of clocking in, clocking out, requesting time off to the way you present yourself and look professional. Um, there's a lot of things that go into making a restaurant, a business, a corporation um, stand out from, from the rest of the crowd. And I think it's those little details that then just add up and accumulate to just good recognition in our communities for, you know, what we do bring to the table as far as customer service, which is, I think, I go to places based on customer service. And so that's what I expect out of my restaurants as well, is just really good customer service. Yeah, I think you guys do that really well. Um, I always know when we go to Runza, we'll have delicious food and great service. Yeah, I think it's, it, it's obviously one of the one of the things that is significantly different. Than, and I don't mean to bag on others, but you guys do it right. I mean, the, the smiles, the communication, the speed, all those yeah, things absolutely. that we're impressed with. Now, we got to talk about this new facility. Yeah. <laughs> have you seen, have you been to the new facility? No. The one on Francis Street is my go to because it's, well, it's right here yeah, by it's, the bay. The it's, location, it's, is yeah. that staying open? Let's, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. Hey, real quick, do you walk or drive? Okay, so uh, I don't go quick, for quick lunch question, typically. Quick question, walk or drive? I, I drive because okay. I'm not at work. <laughs> because it's usually in the evening okay, that I... Okay, I got gotcha. you. No, I, gotcha. I guess I do stop for lunch for my Southwest and I typically <laughs> drive. <laughs> so let's talk about that. I'm glad to hear that that location is staying open because that, like I said, is my go-to. But I do want to hear... I mean, driving by the new facility, it looks absolutely amazing. So I'm excited to go there. What was behind your business decision to move locations? Okay, yeah. Um, so the B and Jeffers location, the original, the OG, we opened that, like I said, in, in February of 88. And that was, I believe, like a bank beforehand. And then I think even before that, it was something else. And so obviously that was before my time. But it just wasn't built to be a restaurant. And so we kind of made do for a really long time really well with what we had. But when Midtown Motors and Mr. Brown decided to retire, he had that lot there on the corner of Ian Jeffers. And it was, I mean, it's a really good corner. And so when we drove by, saw, thank you for however many years, um, but, you know, he announced his retirement, we're like, hey, we need to talk to you. And so, so really that opening up was kind of the key to starting the ball rolling to a new facility building and everything everything like that goes along with that throughout the last 10 years we probably looked at spots but nothing just really fit for what we wanted as a lot size that we thought would be best for the community um, and so when this one happened we just jumped on it and um, it's been awesome it's been a really good experience really a nice facelift to that area of town um, and just being able to have all the cars in the parking lot, none of them hanging out in the street, I think is it was perfect. Um, the parking lot being able to get in and out a lot better than the, the old location. And so it's, it's just been, it's been a win-win, I think, for everybody. Just the, even the way um, the kitchen's set up a little different now, so it hopefully can just streamline everything better as well for the employees to help the food get out faster. And, and it's just been great. You know, a couple impressions I have on the new facility is... You know, I drive a full-size four-door pickup, as does, you know, half the people in North Platte, <laughs> and super comfortable drive through in terms of elbow room. You know, I, I, I don't like a super tight drive through Now, the other location that you were referring to on Leota, I mean, it's it's comfortable to use as well and open, but this one has a nice, comfortable drive through I know when we were designing our bank, that was a non-negotiable item is, you know, good wide drive throughs that are comfortable for people that drive bigger vehicles. And then the outdoor space. 
Uh, yeah. I haven't I haven't sat in the outdoor <clears throat> space yet, but I've been at a couple times and looked at it and seen people and families enjoying it. Is that a normal um, characteristic of a new runs of facility, or is that something unique that you guys did? So it's becoming more and more new. When they're doing remodels or new constructions with Runza, that is an option that we're most of them are taking on. And I think it's just nice. I mean, in Nebraska, you know, yeah, it's going to be snow and be minus 30 some days of the year. But we do have a lot of just great days of great weather where you can go out there. If, you have, if you're traveling with your pet, you can have your pet outside and it doesn't have to stay in the car. And so it's just, I think, a nice added bonus for people um, if they're, they have their dog. They can... Just go outside and sit, and Fido can enjoy the French fries that you toss him, and you guys can enjoy <laughs> your, you know, your your burger, burger and runza, and and then when it's time to go, it's time to go. That's awesome. What were some of the challenges that accompanied relocation and or construction? Challenges is probably the fact that this is my first go at it, <laughs> and so like it was all new to me. Runza does have a, a construction department that kind of helps with all these new builds. Um, we all use the same architect, and so the architect is very familiar with how Runza likes things. And so that definitely helps out. And so, I mean, the hangup is probably just, I mean, I'm fast food. I like to get things done five minutes or less. And the slowing down process of everybody and all the components that it takes to get everything in a line so you can have everything. And yeah, it, it, it was a new eye-opening experience for me. Um, wasn't really bad. We used Chief Construction, and Chief was very easy to work with. They actually um, did our new build when we did Holdridge, and um, so we worked with the same gentleman there. Alan, who was on site, did a fantastic job of making sure all the subs were, were there and on track. He had a schedule, and so I, that really helped the speed of the construction, I think, just keeping everybody on tact and letting everybody know uh, when they're expected to be in so they could start on their aspect of the building. Uh, so it's it's it was a good experience on my part. I don't know that I would love to do this all the time because it, it is a lot. And I like the more sitting down with people, fixing the food, working with the employees, and why is this wall up here and not moved over here and all those le- legal things that engineers worry about and I don't. Yeah, from start to finish, how long did that project take? Um, I think it took... Right about six months. I'm trying to think when they broke ground. I probably have a picture of a timestamp on it. But so we opened the drive through the Saturday of the parade. Right after the parade, we opened the drive through up. It took about another five or six days before we had everything inside ready to open for the customers in that manner. But um, it probably took six, seven months right around there, which is that seems about, actually really fast. Yeah, it was about on par with what their um, proposal was. Wow. And uh, it was, yeah, like I said, just once you open it, just it's like, okay, finally, we can do what we, we know how to do. And so that was the best part of actually construction out of the way. Everything's ready to go. Let's, let's do what we do. Get back to business. Yeah. Yeah, I was really impressed with how fast it occurred. It's a really clean-looking building, modern-looking building. Now, does, does Runza get – did they select the overall design, or do you guys get to drive the design just with some – influence from Runza? How does that work? So uh, typically now what they're going with is they're going with kind of, I don't want to say a cookie cutter, but like the same kind of style, the stone look on there, um, the green wording on the top that kind of, you know, highlights a couple of our items, you know, so they have a lot of this stuff based on the, the size of the lot or where you put the building on the lot. There are some variations. And so there is some input on, the, on, on that side of the planning, but for the most part, and actually like Years ago, my wife and I thought about buying land and building a house, and then we met with a builder, and he was like, hey, what do you want, this, 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 all these questions. And I was like, I just want a house that I can live in that I enjoy. And so, like, that is not my my expertise or anything my brain likes to try to think of is all these little details that have to take place in order for the big grand scheme of things to work well. Um, and so I'm kind of happy that there was someone like that, that there's already a plan out there. And, it, you know, why, why reinvent the wheel if it's already rolling pretty good? And so we just kind of rolled with what they had, looked it over, um, you know, like I said, made a few t- tweaks here and there, and then just kind of went with it. Have you noticed an, a significant increase in efficiency or speed due to the <clears throat> facility? You know, the funny thing is, like, that location has always been very fast, especially in the drive through um, And so I don't know that if we've seen any more efficiency in it because it was already so high. Um, 
it definitely didn't take a dip. I mean, there at the beginning, just working out the bugs with everything. I'm sure there's, you know, obviously like something that happened, but as a whole, the big picture, I feel like that location and those employees there have just done a great job of, of the influx of people coming to look at the new store, um, check out the inside and also, the, you know, continue using the drive through And those, those employees are just rock stars. They are just, just keep rolling and they just keep enjoying it and smiling and, and having a good time. So great. How, how do you guys maintain so much consistency and, and quality with your food production? What things do you have to do to keep things so consistent? You know, it goes back to like Donald Sr. And it, that's just kind of like his philosophy early on is, I mean, our hamburgers fresh, never frozen. Uh, the runzas are still made from the filling that goes inside the runzas to the bread that wraps the, you know, the filling around it. Everything's made in the store every morning. And that's one reason why Runza hasn't just expanded to a thousand locations is because it's still an art form in creating the Runza sandwich. And, and it's been the same for, we're actually next year, 75 years of Runza being a, a restaurant. And so it's crazy to think 75 years, Runza, it's huge in North, in, in Nebraska and just still rolling out the onion rings are still homemade. October 1st, which is very soon, the chili starts up again, so we'll have our chilies and cinnamon rolls coming out, and so that's been a staple for a really long time as well. And just the homemadeness and the things that we do in our prep and preparation to cook things and not just pour it out of a jug and here you go, you know. And so um, it's I think that's just what sets it apart from a lot of other places, mm-hmm. just the quality that goes into it. Our kind of motto is cook less more often, so you don't have a whole bunch of stuff sitting around, but you're baking the runzas you stack them so that they come out, you know, every 10, 15 minutes. So you always have fresh stuff coming out. So it just makes it better. One thing I want to be sure that we touch on is your outreach initiatives. I know Runza as a whole is closely tied with teammates um, and the Alzheimer's Association, but they also encourage each restaurant to take an active role in their communities. And I know you guys, I see you a lot locally doing things, which is something that that we obviously value here at Nebraska yeah. Bank as well. So can you touch on that? Yeah, I can. So you've hit on the Alzheimer's. And so in either June 20th or 21st, it's the longest day, longest sunlight day. And so they've kind of adopted that as the longest day. And Runza's across the brand always donate a dollar. And for every combo meal, a dollar goes back to the Alzheimer's Association. And then like this month, we are wrapping our Runza's in purple wrap that um, have the Alzheimer's logo on it just to help the awareness of it. And then you know, not too long ago, we had our teammates day and teammates is, has over 11,000 matches um, in the state of Nebraska and surrounding communities. And just we've partnered with them since I, I feel like it's been 20, 30 years now. I actually sat on the board for teammates uh, when my kids were younger. And just it's just so cool to see people get involved from the Runza level into the community also and mentor, um, mentor kids. The newest thing we have is probably the we used to do great books for great kids, and we've kind of switched that over to uh, feed the need. And so locally, ours g- proceeds go back to the backpack program here in the Lincoln nice. and at the schools here. And then um, in like our other locations, they go to food banks and just to help those communities keep food on the shelves for the families that need it. And so those are the three big things like all runs is participate in locally with the high school foundation. We've done a lot with the scoreboard and then also at the football field on on the panels that they have on the stadium seating. We've always done little league. We even did like the baseball team here in town, the Plainsmen. We tried it. I mean, there's so much to do. And, and so just trying to just be out there, help kids just have something that they can do, get outside and play and, and do stuff. We've always, you know, been a part associated with St. Pat's with their programs. So it's just, you know, you just want to be involved and, and just get your name out there. And with that, you usually get really good employees that want to come back to you um, just because they remember being on a runs of little league baseball team or something like that. And so it always comes back full circle, but I always feel like just being a part of your local community is just essential. Now, I hear people occasionally say that a Runza in the Husker Stadium in Lincoln tastes better than a Runza anywhere else in the world. <laughs> I think that. that's kind of a myth. But <laughs> do you have any view on, on settling that debate, Josh? Yeah, okay. So we went to the uh, – my family and I went to the volleyball game in Memorial Stadium, and I, I had a Runza sandwich. And 
they're like, why did you have a Runza? Why didn't you do Valentino's <laughs> Pizza? Why didn't you do all this other stuff? I go, because it's the Runza and it's the tradition and it's been here forever. You just got to do it. And um, even though I eat a Runza a day, I, it's still just something you, does it taste better? It tastes darn good. It tastes <laughs> darn good. So I don't think you could go wrong. I didn't have mustard, but <laughs> yeah. you can't go wrong. <laughs> well, I think let's let's pause for a minute and move into our asking for a friend segment. So the question, Ty, and feel free to uh, join the conversation, Josh, but the question that we have for you today is, are interest rates too high to buy a house right now? I see this all over my social media feeds. You just, it's, you know, lots of people talking about this in the news. It's a very trendy topic. It's a great question and it's an important question. And again, the, the, the question is, are interest rates too high right now to buy a house? The answer is yes and no, okay? And it depends on your situation. So first of all, let's let's walk through some different situations or scenarios that people could have. Okay, I currently have a house here in North Platte, and if I have a mortgage interest rate that's 3%, then it may not be a good decision to go buy a different house at this point in time because, you know, I know uh, we have offerings that run from 5.95 to 7.5 today. Okay, that is a significant difference in interest costs. So in that particular situation, it may not make financial sense to buy a different house. Now, what if I'm relocating to the community? Okay, if I'm relocating to the community, that becomes more of a rent versus purchase decision, and people need to look at their individual situation on this. The other thing that I think people have to think about with that, if, I was, if I'm relocating, and the old rule of thumb is if you're going to be somewhere for more than three years and you can um, afford the down payment and the uh, maintenance uh, responsibilities, that buying is ultimately usually a great answer for people to own their home if you're going to own it for more than probably three or four years. And I still really believe that. And I think the thing people have to think about, if I'm relocating and I I know I'm going to be in North Platte for at least a few years, well, if I buy today, if interest rates would go further up, well, at least I have what I have. And if interest rates would go down, I can refinance it and I can gain the advantage of the refinance. And so I think what people still have to focus on is affordability and what they can afford and then making good decisions. But I still think when it comes to renting versus owning, your time span in the area and your and what you can afford in terms of maintenance burden and those types of things still drives. So for for many people, absolutely it's a good time to buy a house. Now the other thing is is what if you're somebody that's life has evolved, okay? Let's say that I am renting or I own a house and I was single, but I've got married, and now I have children, and I need more room. Well, I put them back into the camp of the relocating people. Okay, their life has evolved, and it's time for different housing to meet their needs. Then I think that they should look at what is my time span going to be, and if it's going to be more than three or four years at that location, I absolutely think they should consider buying. Because, again, now, and these interest rates are high, but they were so artificially low for so long. I mean, the interest rates today are right around what the 50-year average. I mean, Jackie and I's first mortgage was like 8.6 or 8.7 in Idaho when we bought a house in the in the late 90s. And so I don't think people should be scared to buy. I think they just need to be meticulous about their own situation. I mean, does that – Josh, what do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, what you said, it really, I mean, just makes so much sense. If you want to buy a house, the interest rates – are what they are, but if they go down, you can always ref- refinance. If they go up, you're locked in at the lower rate. It's kind of like the CDs now. Like, mm-hmm. it's good right now, but do a, a small one if you want to, and then you can, in three, six, seven months, when you have more money, if the interest rates go up, you can buy, get another CD and stack your CDs so you don't have them all maturing at the same time and you space it out. I think a lot of people haven't had to deal with high interest rates before in the past because it's been. 15, 20 years. It has. And I mean, yeah, I have a really good rate on my house and I'm very pleased with my house and I don't plan on going anywhere. But for those who are looking to buy homes, it's, it'll, I mean, my first home was definitely not the 3% that I have now, but it was still a home that I thoroughly loved and enjoyed. And it's, it's a detail as far as the grand scheme of things. They always say your biggest asset will be your house. And so sometimes it takes a little more to get into that huge asset and just you got to make sure you can afford the asset 
and right. don't get in over your head. I think that's the biggest thing is don't out extend yourself financially because then you're in it for a long time over your head. So. Yeah. Yeah, and I was just going to add to that. That's a great point that I don't think it'd be smart for somebody to buy a house with a 7% mortgage and say, hey, I can't really afford it, but I think rates are going to drop soon. Yeah. That would be a decision we wouldn't support. Now, if their income's inclining or different things, that you know, they may push a little harder um, there. But going back to making a good purchasing decision, you know, they always say with real estate that the day you purchase is the day that you either win or lose on real estate. And I really believe that is making good purchasing uh, decisions. The other thing is is we are going to see an era of fixing up occur again. And that's something that the world had kind of moved away from. If you go back to 70s, 80s, 90s, there were times where housing was very tight. People learned to remodel things or they learned how to manage hiring people to remodel things. You're going to start to see that coming back is people are going to buy uh, homes that need a little more work due to affordability. And they're going to learn to do things and learn to fix up things. And I think you're going to see people develop a lot of those skills too. I do hear a lot of people say that they, they're they scared to buy right now um, and they're going to wait for interest rates to drop. So there's kind of, the, I think, this expectation that rates will drop at some point or some point in the near future or home prices. Do you anticipate, I know you're not, uh, you don't have like a ball, glass ball that you can find the answer in tie, but what's your opinion about that? Well, let's, let's kind of one, do one of those fact or fiction comparisons, okay? Here's some facts, is that in general, labor runs between 55 and 65% of a home construction job, meaning the rest is materials. Most people don't realize labor is so high. Mm -hmm. Who thinks the cost of labor is going to drop? I don't. Materials are going to probably have some volatility. There's some of them that have already dropped a little bit, may drop, some may not. But labor is generally going to be 55, 60% of a home build today, and I do not see labor costs dropping. So I do not see construction costs generally dropping. Now, not to say we might not have some peaks or valleys. And so I think, you know, back to the fact side, the fact is that labor is more than half of the cost of new construction, which is really the first domino in housing costs. And I think the probability of it dropping is low. So overall, the costs of building, I'm not convinced will really drop in any material manner ever or anytime soon. Second, let's go to our local market. Fact versus fiction. Do we think we're going to have more people in our market a year from now and two years from now and three years from now? Or do we think we're going to have less people in our market? We Josh, all hope what do you it's think? more. We all hope it's more. We love growth. Mm -hmm. yep. And it seems like things are really trending that way. I mean, if you look at the Sustainable Beef, the Inland Port Authority, and the Rail Park, and all the redevelopment, job creation is occurring here. That should result in growth. We're seeing people from uh, Colorado and other areas that are coming to Nebraska to maybe remove themselves from a more metro style of life and, and a climate like in the great people of Nebraska. And so that is also going to put pressure on our housing needs. Another fact is that demographically, the average number of people living in a house is dropping, household size. So in other words, if your population is level, you're going to need more housing going forward. And people in our area are living longer. Every year, they're living a little longer than they did the year before demographically. And that also puts pressure on your, your housing stock. So I think in um, going through all of those, what I would consider demographical facts or local facts, I think the chances of major drops in housing are pretty low. And if there are drops in prices, they're probably going to be short-term in nature. And as long as somebody's not trying to sell it quickly, they should be able to endure that very well and be glad longer term that they own their home. Okay, so I think that's very interesting. Thanks for your both of your um, insights on that question. Back to Runza. What's next for Runza? Statewide, local, new menu offerings, okay, new Runza so, recipes? Well, I can't give out Runza recipes. Oh, but, darn. <laughs> um, you know, like I said, 75 years is coming up next year. And so um, through the app, kind of just stay posted on that. But through the app, we'll, I know we'll, we'll be doing – some promotions through that. Runza is kind of making a point to try to make 75 years a big deal, uh, which it is. And so keep your ears listening for that. Check the website, check your app. Um, and also starting here, oh, probably at least by the 15th of October, uh, here in North Platte, we're going to be trialing a new uh, lemonade flavors. And so we're doing a, uh, let me see if I got the list here. 
we have a desert pear, we have a watermelon, and a mango. And these are going to be like $3.99 or $2.99 a piece. I can't remember right off the top of my head. Something $99 a piece. Um, and it's going to be a great afternoon pick-me-up. Just Love something to that. get get some more afternoon sales going, just a new taste, something away from, um, you know, the – the soda pop is it soda or is it pop? But it's uh, going to be a nice lemonade. Depends flavor. on what state you live in, right? Exactly, Cause, it cause is. You've lived in a soda area. Well, and now you're and in, in pop Georgia, area. everything was Coke. Yep. Coke yeah. Pepsi, <laughs> Coke Sprite, Coke Seven Up, and and so yeah, that talking about confusion as a kid. Uh, but uh, uh, so we do have some new things coming. Um, that's probably the newest thing um, that I can I can really share because the North Platte locations will be a trial for that, and so if it goes well here in North Platte. Uh, we'll report the information and hopefully it'll go chain wide. So keep a lookout on that. Yeah. Mango lemonade. Mm, that sounds The delicious. watermelon one, I couldn't get enough of. Really? Yeah. And the desert pear is surprisingly really nice. And the, the mango is, you know, it's, it tastes like mango. It's, it's amazing. It's good. I think everything you guys do is good. Yeah. Well, thank you. You know, one other thing I just want to touch on before you leave is that you guys are local owners, and I know that you and your family have provided a lot of leadership in the community in a lot of different um, ways, whether that be in politics or, or city leadership or employment or all those things. And so it's really it's great to have you guys here as leaders in the community. But you work in the restaurants every day too, don't you? you I see you with your sleeves rolled up a lot of times when I'm through. Yeah, I mean— it- it's what we do. It's what we've always known. It's how we got to the place we're at. My dad is actually on his way to Holdridge to, to work there today. Um, I'll be at the location on Leota early, earlier in the week. I was at the New Jeffers location. And so, yeah, it's it's part of what we do. It's just, I mean, I, I'm i not fun by myself. I, I'm more fun around people. And I, you know, I kind of I get a good buzz off of just being around people and interacting. And, and I think that's what's so great about the the environment we have with the team members that we have is we all enjoy each other and it hopefully overflows onto as the customers come in that we enjoy what we do we look forward to it and the more the merrier yeah i think that's the best business lesson anybody's going to get yeah. from our podcast <laughs> yeah thank you so much for taking time out of oh, your you busy thank day you. to join us you're a great podcaster so you're welcome back anytime sweet <laughs> Gladly. Yeah. And we do look forward to a lemonade uh, oh, sharing yeah. at a future podcast Absolutely. event we'll have. We'll, we'll, we'll come over and get some lemonades for a future yeah. podcast. So there uh, we go. And yeah. as mentioned earlier, we'll be just waiting to hear back on how the mustard is on your yes. runs of sandwich. And if our listeners have never tried that, I encourage you to Let give us it a know. try as well. <laughs> Let <laughs> us know. And that wraps up our episode today. We hope you enjoyed learning about the business decision behind moving locations, the construction process, the vision for the future for our beloved Runza. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit subscribe and don't forget to share it with your friends. We'll be back with our next installment. We're sitting down with Mike and Rachel with Reb Development, and they've got a fun announcement of a new business that will be joining the District 177 area. So stay tuned for that. Don't hesitate to reach out to us with comments, feedback, questions. You can visit our website at nebraskalinebank.com slash podcast member FDIC equal housing lender.